Good morning, Life City. It is so good to be with you for another online service. I hope you've had a great week and you have come expectant and ready to receive something from God this morning. Uh, if you're new with us, a big welcome to the Life City family. We hope you have a great time and really enjoy yourself this morning. Don't be afraid to jump up off your sofa and get joined in as we go through all of the incredible content. Um, I've had a really, really good week. You know, I'm a teacher. I'm on half term and actually, do you know, there's something a little, a little different today. Yes, my arms are a bit bigger, you've noticed. All joking aside, I've had a great week um, on half term. And yeah, I've been looking a little bit at a couple of posts for some of my um, other Christian friends have been sharing. And I've seen some incredible testimonies and just a real wave um, of the Spirit of God moving across his church. And this has really inspired me and really got me excited because I know that there is so much God has planned for us as Life City here if we are just ready to open ourselves up and enter into what he is saying. So starting with that, let's jump up off our sofas and get ready to worship. Hey, good morning, Life City. Welcome to church.
rest on us as the spirit was moving over the water spirit come move over us come rest on us come rest on us
turning to the secret place, just an altar and a flame. Love is found here in our sacred space. I hear your voice, I see your face. You're still my first love. You're still. There's a table just for you and me. Break the bread and pour the wine. Perfect union, nothing in between. I am yours and you are mine. You're still.
Morning Life City, it's great to be able to be here and share with you this morning on something that's been on my heart recently. Um, so I'm just going to go straight in uh, with the word this morning, which is in 2 Kings 13 verse 18. Then he said, now pick up the other arrow and strike them against the ground. So the king picked them up and struck the ground three times. But the man of God was angry with him. You should have struck the ground five or six times, he exclaimed then you would have beaten Aram until it was entirely destroyed. Now you will be victorious only three times. A strange verse you might think, but I think it's from a time of just knowing the seasons. You know, God has seasons. God has appointed times. God has times and we can miss them. And I'm sure like me, uh, you don't want to miss God's timing. And I really believe at this time that God is speaking into Life City, just as he's speaking into the church worldwide. At this time, God is always speaking, but there are times when God is wanting to do something new. And I really believe in Life City that we're in one of those times. You know, we've been in this time, we've birthed the year in prayer and fasting, and we've had um, great opportunities of being together and just feeling the presence of God and being in the presence of God. And God is speaking so powerfully into the life of Life City. And it's, it's that that I really want to pick up on, that we don't want to miss that time, right? And we need to be prepared, and it's so easy, just like in Kings, where 
you know, the guy did the right thing. He got the arrows, he was obedient, he struck the ground, but he struck the ground only three times rather than the five or six, which resulted in only defeating the armies for three years and having that sense of release rather than maybe the six years that there was a promise. Now, it's interesting because we don't get told, I oh, told you to do it six times. We don't get told anything other than strike the ground. And I guess I've just been thinking about actually what would I do? And if I'm honest, I would probably uh, two years ago, probably struck the ground once. You know, what is this about? Get the arrow, bang. And actually that comes out of our heart, doesn't it? But, but if I felt God was speaking through the man of God as he was, and I think I'm in a different place now, I'd like to think I was a bit more passionate. And then strike that ground three times, four times, you know what, five, just because I can. And why? Because of that passion, because of what God's speaking. And I guess for Life City, I want us to have that passion. I don't want us to lose out on what God is saying at this time. So I really would encourage you, you know, press in. Press in in your own time in God. You know, I've particularly made some time this year, more time than I would normally spend, partly because I've got it, but also because I just sense there is a season that God has for me and has for us in Life City. So I'm putting aside some of the distractions. I'm spending more time in the Word. I'm spending more time praying. I'm thinking more and reading more about what God is saying. And if you like, just casting my net a little bit further than perhaps I would have done before. And I just want you to do the same. You know, my heart is for a life city and all of you that are listening this morning is that, you know, you don't miss the time. You know, there are seasons. You know, uh, Jesus came up to that fig tree, didn't he? And it should have produced fruit and it didn't and he cursed it. Now, I don't want that to be the same of us. I want us to know that life and what God's expecting of us of this at this time. I want God to be really seeing the fruit and I want us to see the fruit that we have and that can remain from this time that we're in. Because, you know, it, it goes without saying that once that time is gone, you can't have it back. So let's just encourage one another uh, in our connect groups as are on this week and in all the other things that are going on I know at the end of next week we've got another time where we're coming together um, to spend time in prayer again and to have that extended time of fellowship with one another you know spend the time beforehand perhaps getting your mind right getting your spirit right settling your spirit come straight into life city on a Sunday having had praise and worship on so we're just ready we're ready to go we're ready to receive we're ready to get what God is saying to us so let's not miss the appointed times let's not miss and not discern the seasons that we're in so I'm hoping that's been an encouragement to you yes by sure it's been a challenge it's been a challenge to me that we shouldn't miss the season that God has for us in Life City have a great morning have a great week what an awesome inspiration there from Andy Booth um, I've missed hearing his big bellowing chuckle throughout our Sunday mornings. But what a great inspiration, talking about tapping into God's timing and the season he has for us. Now, just a couple of notices. We have our worship and prayer live stream happening on Friday, the 25th of Feb. This will be on our YouTube channel, so make sure you get that in your diaries, put it in your phone calendars, and you make sure that you attend and don't miss out. Finally, uh, we've got a little section on stories coming up and we would love to encourage you to tell us your stories of how God is working in and through your life. You know, everyone has a story to tell and there is always something happening, even when we're in lockdown and it seems like time has slowed, slowed down and there is nothing happening. And me and Pastor Steve took a, a short moment to have a quick chat about stories and the power they have. Why don't you take a listen? So we're going to take a quick opportunity to talk a little bit about testimony here and why it's so important. And I'm lucky enough to have Pastor Steve here with me just to have this discussion. Um, so Pastor Steve, what do you think is the importance of testimony? Um, I think, you know, telling stories or testimonies, as we kind of kind of use that word from time to time, I think so important because they can be a great inspiration yeah, to not only yeah, your life, but the lives of the people you know and the wider church when you're sharing something that God has done, how God maybe has moved in your life or how he's turned up or how he's caused a breakthrough to happen. And, um, you know, the early church spent a lot of time, you know, talking about what God had done. 
You know, there was this thing called oral tradition where they would hand down the stories of how God had moved in the nation or moved yeah, in the life of a particular person or had shown up or done something. And, and so stories yeah, were important. They were an important way of bringing that sense of who God is, what he's doing, yeah, how he's moving right now. And that, I really think, builds faith and stirs people to want to seek God more. Definitely. And it's really interesting, as you say, you mentioned oral tradition there and the way it was back in biblical times, they shared stories between families. But I guess now we have a whole raft of mediums for telling stories. Yeah. You have movies, books, social yeah. media, magazines, um, radios, like everything you could possibly think of. How do you think the telling of stories has changed from biblical times to now? Well, I, I don't think it has changed in the sense of, you know, your story is important. How we kind of get that out there now and how, how we share it has changed a lot. But I think the idea that, you know, me telling you or anybody else, yeah, how my life has been impacted or changed because of what God has done, you know, that carries power because people respond to the personal. They respond to the reality yeah, of your life. And if you share a story about how God has moved or what God has done, yeah, I think that causes people, you know, if it causes them to question, if it causes them to ask something, well, that's great. But if it causes them to want to go and seek that themselves or take hold of that themselves, you know, that's a powerful thing. And so I think the idea of personal stories and how we share them with one another, yeah, the, the methods might have changed or the, the communication pathways may have changed, but the essence of the power of what it does, I think is so important for us. Yeah, stories are um, so important. I've done a whole degree pretty much on telling stories yeah. in narrative writing and just the impact they can have to challenge, teach, inspire, um, all of their power is really kind of, it's flowed through humanity for yeah. generations. Um, on that, what do you think is a story that has really challenged or inspired or taught you something? Wow, well, there's lots of those over the years, yeah. But I can think of a time when I was a very young Christian. Um, I mean, I could share stories right after that now, but this was an important one because it really changed the direction of my life. At that point, I really didn't know that God was a healer, for instance. And I remember this person, you know, turning up at the church I was attending at that point, and they just shared this story about how God had healed them, healed them of this sickness. And I thought, wow, I'd never heard anything like it. And they were talking about a place that they'd gone to, you know, to, to sort of go and uh, receive this healing. They'd gone to a, a local fellowship and God had moved so powerfully and strongly there. And it caused me, inspired me to want to go, wanted me to, I mean, not only to go and see what had happened, to experience that kind of thing, but also it, it drove me to the word of God to really find out, yeah, what the word had to say about God, yeah, and his ability and his desire yeah, to heal his people. And uh, it just birthed something in me of a belief that God yeah, wanted to look after my life. And you know, if there was sickness in my life, that God was more than able yeah, to heal me. And that was just a story that, it was a pivotal story at a young age in my Christian life, because I'd never heard anything. Nobody had ever talked about that kind of thing. It, kind of, it was like a new discovery. And I think stories have the power for us to discover new things. Yeah, brilliant, I love that. Um, so moving forward as Life City, uh, we want to be able to use each other's stories and share our stories with each other. And um, I know you've said it and we've talked about this before, how we don't hear enough from all the stories and all the lives that are going on within Life City. So how do you envision us sharing stories with each other? Yeah, well, that's a really good question because I think there are a lot of stories out there, you know. And I know because people will send in WhatsApp messages or text or I'll we'll, hear it on the grapevine, you know, of how this happened or that happened. So I think that what we need to encourage our church to do yeah, is to be proactive. And you can do that initially yeah, by going to our app and there's going to be an area there. You'll be able to click on it. It'll say something like share your story. Yeah, just like on the screen, share your story. And you can put in just, you know, uh, a few sentences about what God has done. And what we'd love to do is to pick that up and bring it down to the studios here. You know, we call it the studios now. Bring it down to the studios and record that, yeah, so that we can push it out and people can really hear what 
yeah, God is doing in the people of Life City. And so I think, so initially, you know, go to our app, share your story with us, and if you're willing, yeah, we'll record you and we'll send that out so people can be blessed by what God is doing in your life. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. I'm looking forward to hearing some stories. And I guess there's a point of just don't doubt how valuable your story and your experience is because Although you might think it's just an everyday, yeah. it really could impact someone in a way that you might not have planned for, but yeah. God has planned for it yeah. to be used. Absolutely. And I think all the time, you know, <laughs> I, I, I've been there, maybe you've been there where, you know, in your mind you think, oh, that's, nobody wants to hear that, or that's not really important, or who am I? That's a big one. Who am I to tell you know, somebody else? Well, exactly. Who are you? you? Well, you're a child of God, yeah? You're somebody who's got a story to tell. You are somebody who God has moved in, you know, uh, uh, their life. And, and that has got a whole power of itself to be able to touch and transform others. And so we need to hear the stories that are in Life City, yeah? We don't want to just catch them every now and again. We need to hear them. We need to be sending them out. We need to be blessing people with what God is doing. Yeah, 100% agree. So Life City, um, we hope you enjoyed that. The app section will be up soon and we hope that you really take hold of this. You share your story because we want to hear what is going on in your life. Um, hope you enjoyed that. So why don't we take a moment for our offering now and my verse is 2 Corinthians 9, 7. It says each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but it really frustrates me and it, it definitely frustrates my dad when I do something or someone does something and they do it un ungratefully or uncheerfully or as if it's a burden to them. And I think this relates straight away to God as well. He is there and he wants us to um, worship and be with him and have relationship with him cheerfully throughout all areas and all aspects of our Christian faith. It's not just um, when we're there worshiping and he's like, oh, Tom's going, done some great worship. And then I go and begrudgingly read the Bible and give my offering and reluctantly go to church and trail through the door with my head hung low. I don't think God delights in that. Um, and really, this is a heart decision. It says what you've decided in your heart to give. You know, giving can be quite um, just an act. It can be quite superficial sometimes. We just do it because we have to do it. That's the way it happens. But really, um, giving is a real personal and intimate thing between you and God. It is giving of something that is almost like a life force, a sustaining resource that we have here in the world. And we're giving up of that and saying, God, you know, you're more important uh, I value my relationship more than I value my relationship with money or the resource and the opportunity it gives me. And really it's a hard decision and we have to come and look at ourselves and think, am I giving reluctantly? Am I doing this just because I have to do it? Or am I doing it cheerfully because I want to do it? And I don't think anything in our relationship with God should be done because we have to or because we're being made to. It should be a heart decision that says, I really want to do this because I value you and what you've done for me, God. So let's just pray over that this morning. God, I pray that as we're giving this morning that we would be giving cheerfully and that in our heart we would have decided that this is something we value and something we want to do for all that you have given us. You gave your son on a cross so that we could have this relationship, so that we could have everlasting life and a greater purpose in you. And I just pray that we would recognize the wonder of who you are with our giving this morning. Amen. If you'd like to give, the details will be down below me on the screen. And you can also do that via our app. Good morning, Life City. What an absolute joy to be with you again this morning. And I really hope you had a great time in worship. I uh, love that new song that uh, was introduced today called Rest on Us. And I uh, just want to give a big shout out and, um, you know, to our team doing such a great job, our worship team week by week. And uh, maybe you want to send them a WhatsApp and just really encourage them. Hey, uh, I really enjoyed Phil's message last week about rest and finding that you know, that place of rest in the presence of God. And I really want to encourage you, maybe you just need to tap back into that message again and have a listen because there was so much to unpack in that. And so I really want to encourage you. Well, I've got a message today for you and it's really sort of come out of my own journey 
some of my own struggles, some of my own, you know, I suppose, challenges at the moment. And um, I've got a message called Thought Wars. Thought Wars. Um, it's interesting because I've been hearing over and over and over again, you know, a couple of words that keep sort of keep coming into my arena. And I kind of want to talk about them today a little bit. And the first word is the word mental health or emotional well-being. How is your mental health, people say? You know, how are you doing emotionally? And I suppose in some respects, it's not something I always give a lot of thought to. I'm aware of my emotions and I'm aware, I suppose, of my mental uh, well-being to a degree. Uh, but when I began to sort of look at it a little bit, I thought, I'm going to look into this. And so really, I thought, well, like I often do, I kind of wanted to get a definition. I suppose to put it really simply, your mental health or my mental health or my emotional well-being is about our thoughts and feelings and our ability to cope and manage them. Uh, I read a really interesting report by the National Health Foundation that said over this year yeah, of the pandemic that emotional stress and anxieties and people's inability to be able to always deal with their yeah, mental well-being had risen by 62%. I thought, wow, that is absolutely amazing. And I kind of wondered, am I in that 62% sometimes? You know, it's easy for us to look great on the surface, but sometimes what's going on underneath? But what this report said was really interesting. It said that there was a particular, you know, association with a word that kept on cropping up. And that word was uncertainty. Uncertainty. The whole idea of not knowing. You know, it's an uncertain, you know, world at the moment. We've got uncertain change that seems to be happening, you know. I don't know about you, whether you followed the government recently, but they're saying one thing in the morning and saying a different thing in the evening. There's that uncertainty about, you know, change that's happened. There's uncertainty about medical treatment at the moment, you know. Are you for the vaccine? Are you not for the vaccine? There's uncertainty about our economy. You know, is it ever going to recover? There's uncertainty about sending our kids back to school and what that's going to mean. There's uncertainty, yeah, even the declining yeah, uh, uh, data to do with COVID, whether it's all just going to change again once we start moving back to some sense of normality. It's this uncertainty about the future. And a lot of people are taken up. Yeah, and it's affecting mental health. It's affecting emotional well-being. You know, for some of us as Christians, we might just trot out the phrase, well, God's in control. You know, after all, God is sovereign. And I've thought a lot about that phrase because I totally believe that God is sovereign. He is the sovereign God. But you, sometimes I think, do we use that word when we're not really sure about what it means? You know, when we talk about the sovereignty of God, we are basically saying that God is supreme. He is the supreme authority and all things are under his control. But I think you have to appreciate and understand that because everything is under the control of God doesn't necessarily mean he's going to take control in every situation. I kind of want to say that again. God is sovereign. That means all things are under his supreme authority, under his supreme control. But it doesn't mean that he takes control. Uh, I remember when I was learning to drive, and maybe you remember too, that uh, you know, I had that driving instructor who would sit next to me. And whilst my hands were on the steering wheel and my feet were on the pedals, just across from me, there was another set of pedals. There was another clutch and another brake pedal. And you know, I was in control of the car, and I would steer it, and he would give me instructions, and I would do what he's doing, until there was a moment yeah, where my control was not sufficient. And the driving instructor would take control at that point. I think we need to understand that God never created you and I so that we'd be some kind of automatons, that we would have no control in our life, that there was not an aspect that yeah, God had not already given to us. And I think we need to understand, yeah, when you look, even when you look at the life of Jesus, that even though Jesus carried the omnipotent power yeah, of the Godhead, he didn't use it in every situation. He didn't take control in every situation, we've been designed yeah, with the authority that God has given to us. God has enabled and released yeah, permissive will into yeah, humanity. You have an ability to decide. You have an ability to have authority and take authority. You know, God spoke right at the beginning in the garden. Yes, when Adam was there, he said, you can have all dominion. 
You know, go forth, multiply, take dominion, have authority. God has given us an ability to exercise authority and dominion. And I think he expects us, yes, to exercise it. God is sovereign, of course he is. But he's given you and I an ability to be able to take control of our lives in and through him as we're led by the Holy Spirit. So here's a question for you today, because it's a question I'm asking myself, and that is, where are your thoughts taking you? Where are your thoughts, where is your thought life taking you today? You know, our minds are busy places. There's a continual stream, yeah, of thoughts that are going on all of the time. Even now, as you're listening to this message, you'll be thinking certain things. Maybe an agreement might not be an agreement, you know. But I want to say this to you. Your life and my life moves towards our strongest thoughts. But here's the thing. Our strongest thoughts are not always positive. But they do, yeah, take us to places. My life and your life yeah, moves towards our strongest thoughts. What are you thinking about? What are the thoughts that are going on in your life right now? You see, your thoughts determine yeah, mental pathways. Here's the thing, you see, we are seeing future possibilities. This week you'll have looked out and there'll be in your mind things that you're thinking about, possibilities that can be yeah, spoken out sometimes but more often are internalized. And they can be negative as well as positive. And our mental pathways can take us to places, can lead us in certain directions that are not always the most healthy for us. And I need you to know, yeah, that our thought life comes under attack. Ephesians 6 and verse 12 says this, is for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. Yeah, do you feel there's a struggle on sometimes? I know I certainly do from time to time. I feel the struggles in my life. Yeah, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood. That's an important thing to remember, yeah, that we are in Christ, that we are new creatures, that God is our Father, yeah, that he has enabled us, but there is struggles, there are struggles that go on, but they're not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Sounds a bit like, ooh, doesn't it? But we need to understand that there is an enemy out there and he wants to attack your thought life. He wants to attack my thought life because as a man thinks, so he is. You know, our thought life is so powerful. What you think leads your life. And I don't know about you, but it comes back to my mental health. It maybe comes back to your mental health. Where are our thoughts leading us today? And here's the second word that came out of that report that I've also been thinking a lot about, and it's the word mindfulness. Mindfulness. Have you heard that word? Mindfulness. I had to look it up because I thought, you know, I kind of want to make sure I'm getting the, a clear definition of what this means. And mindfulness is an awareness, your awareness, my awareness, your ability, my ability to process constructively, to understand clearly and to respond to what we're thinking and feeling. I want to give you three verses and just consider these for a moment, okay? This is the first one, Colossians 3, 2, it says, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. Wow, that's a big isn't it? Set your mind not on what's happening around you, not on the situations that you're experiencing day by day. I'm not saying that we should ignore them totally. I'm not saying, yeah, that they don't have a place, but Colossians is saying, set your minds on things that are above. Let's set them on... Yeah, God, let's set them on his heart, his desires, his plan, his purposes for you and me. Set your minds on things that are above. Yeah, God works above the natural order of this world. God operates yeah, in realms that we can tap into yeah, if we begin to set our minds on them. Hey, I want to encourage you, set your minds on on the things of God today, on the things of his word, on the things of his plans and his purpose, not on the things that are on earth. Hey, there's always stuff happening. Matthew says there's always trouble, there's always stuff going on. Yeah, don't worry about those things. Hey, you can only deal with worry when you begin to get your thoughts focused on something else. And Colossians says, set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. As Isaiah 26, three says this, you keep in perfect peace. How many of us need God's perfect peace? I don't know about you, I need to put my hand up and say, I need that perfect peace of God. Yeah? You keep in perfect peace those whose mind 
is fixed on you. What's your mind fixed on right now? What are you thinking about? What's happening in your thought life? Yeah, are you mindful of it? Are you aware of how your thought life is moving? 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 16, and many of us will know this, says that we have the mind of Christ. You have, I have the mind of Christ. So what does that mean? Because you've got to think all the time, what's it mean? If I have the mind of Christ, what does it mean for me? And I want to say this, he says that we have the capacity to think with a new understanding, a new perspective. We can see and interpret what's happening in this world as we fix our mind above, where we fix our mind yeah, on the things of God, yeah, as Jesus did. So we can see and interpret as Jesus did. That means it gives us opportunity to respond like Jesus. Yeah, Jesus fixes, fixes his mind yeah, and his thought life on God, on the Father, on his plans and purposes. And so with that in mind, because that's all just like to lay a foundation for this morning, to be able to come on and say this, I want to read the key verses this morning to you, yeah, because this is about the war that's going on in your thought life and in my thought life, yeah, kind of are we thriving, you know, as Christians or are we striving, yeah, are we just getting by or is there something in our life that's causing us to tap in to the rich potential of God, yeah, as we set our minds on him, as we think about the things that God has spoken and God has declared, to take the opportunities to be able to exercise that mind of Christ, yeah, and to live lives like Jesus would have us live. And so I want to read, and this is the Apostle Paul, and he's writing to the Corinthian church. It's interesting what was happening in the Corinthian church, you know, uh, lots of things were being manifest, the Holy Spirit was doing outstanding work there, but they were also very confused about a lot of things. And Paul is having to kind of write, yes, yeah, sort of almost instructive letters. And this is what he says, so we're picking up 2 Corinthians 10 and verse 1, it says, by the humility and gentleness of Christ... Yeah, Phil was talking about that last week, about having a bit more gentleness, wasn't it? By the humility and gentleness of Christ, I appeal to you. I, Paul, who am timid when face to face with you, but bold towards you when I weigh. What he was saying there was saying, look, when I come to speak to you, I'm not coming to kind of rebuke you. I'm kind of coming in that gentleness, that humility. I may have written letters when I'm away that seem a bit bold and a bit strong, but I kind of, kind of want to come and explain my thinking to you. And he says, I beg that when I come, I may not have to be as bold as I expect to be towards some people. Notice what it says, towards some people who think that we live by the standards of this world. Wow, that's an important thing. Yeah, for some who think. The standards that we live by, for those of us who know Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, is not the standards of the world. It's the standards of the kingdom yeah, of heaven. And he's saying here, yeah, some people who think that we live by the standards of this world, for though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. See, coming back to this whole idea of thought wars, and then it goes on, and we know this so well. It says, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. They're not swords and spears it would have been in their time. Yeah, on the contrary, they have divine power. I love that, divine power. That's dynamis power. You know, it's the same power that the early church in Acts demonstrated. Yeah, that power that flows from God comes to us through the Holy Spirit. They have divine power to demolish strongholds. Wow. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. What's the knowledge of God like in your life? How much is the knowledge of God occupying your thoughts? And it goes on, it says, and we take captive every thought, wow, to make it obedient to Christ. Wow, that's a, an amazing piece of scripture. And I kind of just want to unpack it just for a few moments. And I want to share three key thoughts with you. Is that okay this morning? You might kind of want to write these down. Yeah, you might kind of want to just jot them down on your phone there and just take these because I think we need to get a hold of this. There is a whole war going on yeah, in our thought life. And we need to come to this place where we realize that we're not doing it in earthly wisdom. Yeah, we're not doing it by the way the world would do stuff. Yeah, there is something that we can tap into that's the things of the kingdom of God. And this is kind of what I want to, yeah, kind of inspire and build it into you today. So the first one is about establishing resistance. Establishing resistance. It says we walk in flesh, or rather Paul says, he says, we walk in flesh. 
Paul's talking about being human with all its different facets and struggles. Yeah, that he's saying, look, I'm not trying to come as some super spiritual person. I understand what the flesh is like. I understand what it is to be weak. I know what it is to struggle, yeah, with my thought life. I know what it is, yeah, to be challenged with stuff. But here's the interesting thing. He's got something more, yeah, to say. Something that rises above the fact that we are just people of flesh because we're also people, yeah, of the spirit. We're a Holy Spirit resides with us. We name this year favor and flow. Yeah, the favor of God upon your life, upon your family, upon your marriage, upon your business, upon your workplace. Yeah, and also the flow of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It's interesting because there is a saying. Have you ever heard this saying? When the going gets tough, the tough get going. Ever heard that phrase? When the going gets tough, people, the tough get going. Well, here's my experience if I'm really honest. And I think that sometimes there's a need for transparency, isn't there, in the Christian life. What I've found in my life, when the tough gets going, sometimes I crumble. Sometimes I give up. Sometimes I lose heart or lose faith in the thing. And my anxieties and my stresses, yeah, lead sometimes to mental defeat. Because the wall that's going on in my mind is telling me, yeah, that I can't or it won't happen. And I can think of myriads of times through my life where I've really had to take hold of myself and do battle because the flesh part of me would easily give up. But there's also a spiritual part of me. And I live my life out of my spiritual identity, not my flesh identity, not my world identity. I, I live out of this new creation that there is in Christ. And so that means I've got to resist the worldly thinking yeah, that surrounds me at times. Many of you know that I used to teach. And uh, part of my teaching, I used to teach uh, electronics. And sometimes I'd be doing, you know, electronic circuit boards uh, with my students and I'd be explaining certain components that they were using. And one of the components that they would use regularly would be a resistor, just a really small component, but a really key component because the resistor would control how much current flowed to a particular component. Yeah, it would control. You would put a resistor there in front of a particular component to make sure it was getting the right yeah, amount of voltage and current flow into it. And you and I need to develop a resistance yeah, in our life, a control about what is flowing yeah, into the various components of our life. You know, and that comes from what we put in front of us. Some of us need to stop. I kind of want to say that. Four letters, we need to stop feeding ourselves with certain things. You know, I don't know about you, but I kind of watch the news and, and I like to try and keep informed. But there's a part of me kind of also wants to switch off because I'm not really interested in a lot of the negativity that comes across because even though I think that I'm capable of rising above it, it occupies my thoughts. And whilst we're not to become so disconnected from the world, we don't need to go on. We do need to think about what we are feeding ourselves. What news are you feeding yourself? What words are you feeding yourself with? Some of us need to stop the negative conversations, yeah, that go on in our head. Some of us need to stop listening to the personal criticism that sometimes comes. Or, yeah, giving in to the poor attitudes that we can display because they feed our thought life. We need to develop this resistance yeah, in our lives. And so that's an interesting one because it talks about, as it goes on, about pulling down strongholds. You know what a stronghold is? A stronghold is a place that has been fortified or established. Yeah? And it's interesting because we can build strongholds in our thought life. And they gain strength when we feed those thoughts. That's why we have to develop a resistance to certain things because they establish and build yeah, mental strongholds. And so here's a question for you. It's the second question I kind of want to give you, which is what is your biggest thought stronghold right now? What is your biggest thought stronghold? Is it driven by your current situation? Are you feeling hopeless or helpless? or it's pointless, or it's worthless. Because I want to say to you today, yeah, that God is our hope. God's hope is an anchor to our soul. And when we feel that there is no hope, God's hope, 
yeah, can be there invading our lives, causing our life to be strengthened. Do you feel helpless? I want you to say you can call out because there is a God who will respond. There is a God who will respond in your time of need. When we are weak, he makes us strong. Perhaps you think that your life is pointless right now, but I want you to know that you've got to get your thoughts focused again on the plans and the purposes of God because he has a plan for your life. He has a purpose for your life. Your life is not pointless. It has meaning. Or maybe you're thinking you're feeling worthless today. Don't feel worthless. Jesus was sent because God values you and I so much. Jesus went to a cross because he values your life. You know, there might be things surrounding you. There might be things in your thought life. Yeah, that's making you feel worthless. But you are worthy because Jesus has made you worthy. He went to a cross so that great exchange could happen. And everything, yeah, that God wanted to do us came through that cross and is available in our lives. There is nothing worthless today in your life or in my life. You know, and we've got to come to a place where we can use two very simple yeah, weapons of warfare, and that is praise and declaration. I love the story of Jericho, you know, when Joshua has led them across, you know, the Jordan, and they are there before Jericho. And God says, this is what I want you to do. It's not about your swords and your spears. It's not about your shields and your ability to attack a wall. No, this is what you're going to do, people. You're actually going to march around this city. And furthermore, you're not going to say anything. But what is going to happen is there are going to be trumpets that are going to blast out the sound yeah, of God before that city. And they marched around that city once every day and then on the seventh day seven times. And at the end of that time of those trumpets blowing and declaring the sound of God, it said that they shouted. Come on, some of us need to make a shout today. We need to praise our God. Sometimes we need to silence the things that are around us, stop speaking that stuff, and just get... That's why worship's so important, that we can praise our God. And a declaration can come out of our mouth. A shout can come, yeah, that will bring the walls down in our thinking. Bring the walls down of the strongholds that have been established there. And let the word of God begin yeah, again, to build new structures in our life. And that's why, and I come on to this third thing, we've got to learn to take thoughts captive. Yeah, it says taking every thought captive. Have you ever caught a thought? Have you thinking about that? Have you ever caught a thought? Yeah, something was said or you heard something and you caught it and it began to take shape in your mind. I don't know about you, I've been there many times. Sometimes I've overheard things or, or caught things and it's only been a little bit and my mind has started to race with it and run with it and before I know it, I'm thinking a particular thing. You know, I, I remember once and I share this just by way of my own history of my life. I remember when somebody said, I don't think Steve should ever preach again. I caught that thought and it began to establish a stronghold of mind. For eight years, I didn't preach, I didn't speak, because I had this simple thing going around in my head, you're not good enough. You ever felt that? You're not good enough. And I want you to know that we've got to take yeah, those types of negative thoughts, we've got to take them captive. How do we take them captive? With the word of God, with God's truth. In God, I am enough. In God, I am an overcomer. In God, I have the victory. I have God's faith. It's an overcoming, world-beating faith. I don't know about you today. What's ever happening in your thought life, whatever's happening in your emotional well-being, in your mental health, I want to tell you there is a God who loves you. There's a God who's ready to come and speak afresh into your life. I already believe this word this morning is for people out there. And if you know that you know you need a breakthrough, you know that you need to develop that resistance into your life. You know you need to pull down some negative stronghold. You know that you need to take some of these thoughts captive. This is a message for you. I want you to jump to your feet right now. Come on, jump to your feet wherever. Raise your hands because I'm going to pray and I'm going to believe the Spirit of God is going to touch your life. There is an anointing today. Come on, I'm going to pray. Lift your hands now. Father, I pray. Lord, Father, I pray for that strength of your word to come into people's hearts and minds today. Father, I pray that we would be able to develop that resistance to what we have heard, what's feeding our thoughts right now, that's keeping us tied down, that's making us feel helpless or worthless, or that the life is pointless. No, in the name of Jesus right now, Holy Spirit, touch lives, touch hearts, bring your reassurance, God, 
through your spirit today. Holy Spirit, even now, bring that sense of love and purpose and peace to people's hearts. Let there be new thoughts that are established this morning. I break bonds over people's thinking today. I break bonds in the name of Jesus Christ over people's mindsets. And I declare we have the mind of Christ. I pray as we move forward, God, today, Lord, that we would move in freedom. I declare that freedom over lives today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, I'm really believing that in the words that have been spoken today, there's something, yeah, that's birthed that freshness, yeah, in your thought life today. Yes, that, that war that goes on, that we are winning it with the Word of God. Hey, and maybe you've been watching this morning. Maybe it's been your first or second time, and you're not really sure whether you have that relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm going to take a moment to pray a prayer, and you can pray it right after me. And I really believe as you pray it, God will touch your life, and you'll be transformed. And you'll come into that relationship with Jesus Christ. You'll come into that relationship with God as your Father. So if that's you this morning, and you want to pray that prayer, pray it right after me now. Lord Jesus. I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you gave your life for me. And today I turn from my sin and I embrace my new life. I declare you as my Lord and my Savior. And from this moment, I will live my life for you. Amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer today, we would love to know. You can make contact with us just in the text in the YouTube window there or go to our website and click New to Church and someone from our team will make connection with you. Hey, Life City, have a great day. And remember, yeah, look at your thought life because we're winning it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Well, I hope you have had an awesome morning with us. We have had an absolutely incredible time. Make sure that you stay connected throughout the week. Do not be doing life alone or in isolation when you have a community around you. One way you can do this, a connect group. Please email us or join via a website and we can get you connected into a great group. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and remember this is the year of favour and flow.